It wasn't always this way. There once was hope and a bright future for shopping malls. The time of simplicity has passed. We now live in a world that is right now all the time. Patience is no longer a virtue and our minds are consumed with content. As the days go by, we move forward without a thought of the past we're so quick to forget. Where simply company and laughs once reigned supreme, we now bury ourselves in an isolated digital experience. The path we are on was only further motivated by an invisible enemy that has tested our resolve as humans. We're more connected but disconnected at the same time than we have ever been before. You know, it wasn't always this way. These malls were not always struggling like they are today as we walked through the halls of the now closed Gwinnett Place Mall. I was fortunate enough to get inside this property post closure with permission and you are going to see an incredible next 15 minutes or so of a look of a daytime closed tour and a nighttime closed tour. So I'm really excited to show you guys this. There really is nothing else left to say that has not already been said. I have been to these places over the past five years and pretty much seen the gamut from the small rural mall to the large, empty, massive, million square foot mall as this mall almost approaches in square footage. We can argue back and forth about why this mall closed, but I think we all know the reason why. And even though there are multiple factors that go into the closure of malls, the main reason why this property closed is competition and changing demographics. The Mall of Georgia, which is a massive mall, I believe it's the biggest mall in the state, and one of the biggest in the country if I'm not wrong, opened only 10 miles away from this property. You also had a Mills Mall that opened up not too far away and combine that with the changing, like I said, ep economic and demographic factors, um, and you have a recipe for disaster. And, on a later note, it also does not help things when good old Moonbeam Properties buys, your, buys said property and proceeds to do nothing with it. By the way, it's funny that Stranger Things filmed here and there was a Russian element to Stranger Things because some of us within the, within the Dead Mall community think that Moonbeam is actually a front for some Russian group, but more on that at another time. <laughs> um, it was great to get back inside of this mall and see it again. I was here a couple years ago and as you guys probably know for the most part I was fortunate enough to sneak onto the set of Stranger Things while they were filming and um, got you guys some pretty exclusive footage of the Stranger Things set. Now while it is true that 
malls in the 70s and stuff were probably a better aesthetic with the darker tones and the earth tones and the conversation pits and all that. And I do love those malls very much so. The neon is uh, and colors and just, you know, the, the bright vibrance of, of the 80s is what personally, just myself, uh, is a favorite of mine. Being a DJ, being a color per- colorful personality, uh, that's just what naturally draws me um, to these places from an aesthetic standpoint. Now, currently, as it sits, Moonbeam, thankfully, does no longer own this property, and it was sold back to Gwinnett County, and plans are unsure at this time. I believe there are some mixed-use development ideas that are uh, in the works right now, but as of right now, it is completely empty except for the Asia Mart, which is still open, the Macy's, which is still open with no mall entrances, of course. The interior mall is officially closed. And as of the recording of this, the Sears anchor is being used as a mass vaccination site. So it is being used to inject some life into folks, so to speak, while this mall itself is completely and 100% dead. Now, uh, just a couple of random things here. The Stranger Things set started to be constructed uh, in the early summer months of 2018, and I don't know to what extent the producers at Netflix knew about this, but of course, as I had mentioned in previous videos, and others have mentioned, um, Silling Man, a uh, young girl who was a college student, was unfortunately lost her life in this mall. Her dirtbag, scumbag boyfriend, who was an abusive piece of crap, um, brought her to this mall and strangled the poor woman, and the poor girl sat in the back of a subway in the food court for weeks before she was discovered. And I did go back there, and I did film some footage of that subway, and even though it's been several years, and that has since been used for Hawkins Heroes in the Stranger Things film, um, I did not think that it was appropriate to show that footage. Um, to you all, that's something that's kind of a sacred part of the mall, and uh, I, I do want to say that this video is dedicated to, to her memory. So, um, you know, there are a lot of cool things coming up for Ace's Adventures. Um, as of the recording of this, I just got back from Georgia, and uh, I got some pretty awesome stuff to show you guys. I went down to Jasper Mall in uh, Jasper, Alabama, and filmed at the Jasper Mall. For those of you who are into the cult phenomenon, Dead Malls, you will know that um, Jasper Mall was filmed and used as kind of a Netflix uh, indie documentary about the... It's basically telling the small town story of Jasper Mall and their employees. Um, unfortunately, when I was there, Mike, the famous quote-unquote Tiger King doppelganger, was not there. But uh, look for some great footage on that. Um, I also filmed an updated version on the Mountaineer Mall in uh, Morgantown, West Virginia. As well as I filmed the Signal Town Mall, uh, Signal Town, Signal Hill Mall uh, in Statesville, North Carolina. And last but not least, an unexpected and amazing video is coming in just a few short weeks. Uh, I was able to get back into the now closed and partially demolished Knoxville Town Center Mall in Knoxville, Tennessee. And that will be a video like nothing you have ever seen before. And lastly, here, uh, I just want to say that uh, I appreciate everyone in the Dead Mall community. Um, my friend Sal, who uh, does great work, and even though we have very contrasting styles and can be contrasting people in some fronts, uh, is an amazing, talented creator, and he did a, his own spin on this video um, with a little bit of help from my footage, which is no problem, of course, because I love helping my friends. Uh, he goes deep into the history of this property, so that's why I didn't cover it too much. As you guys know, I like to just touch on it and just kind of give you a visual um, representation of what you are seeing. The artist that you heard in this video is Bryce Miller. Uh, I highly encourage you. A lot of you ask me where I get this footage from, or the where I get my music from, rather, and um, I get a lot of my footage from Bandcamp.com, www.bandcamp.com. That's where I find a lot of synth wave, retro wave, future wave, dark wave. There's all kinds of waves, Simpsons wave, Sal wave. <laughs> There's all kinds of, uh, of, of um, music that I get from there. Uh, you're going to hear a track from a, an artist called Thunder Porpoise. Uh, use all kinds of music. You know, music is so essential to these videos, and it's just, it's, it's, it's so me. 
So I just wanted to chat with you guys and uh, hope you guys enjoy this video. Uh, I humbly ask if you are not already subscribed to become a subscriber and uh, help as we are on the drive to 50,000 subscribers. Uh, check me out on Patreon at patreon.com slash asusadventures. And um, I will be heading out to uh, the west again here in just a few days to do some more filming, trying to stay active and travel and uh, bump up the content here for 2021. Uh, you can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at Aces Adventures one Please follow me along there. And um, what you're going to see here in a second is pretty awesome. So I was given full permission to film inside this property and uh, saw some pretty incredible things. I explored every single nook and cranny of this building. And it was, it took me a while. I got to admit, when I was done, my feet were pretty tired because I walked around this mall for about six hours uh, as day transitioned to night. Um, just lastly here, mentioning a few things. Like I said, the video is going to transition to a nighttime tour uh, of the property, including a full detailed look at what remains of the Stranger Things set. Uh, I was told by uh, officials that they were going to keep this, uh, this, this set, which you're going to see here in a minute, up and even make it more of a permanent exhibition. But uh, there's a conflict about whether it was a conflict of interest with the town. And there, obviously people, even to this day, are still trying to see this and sneak into the property to get a look at the Scoops Ahoy set and all that. But I will tell you, as you will see, it is long gone. There is n hardly nothing left. It looks mostly like an empty food court. So thank you for listening to me babble yet again. Um, this is Anthony with Aces Adventures. You all have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And keep an eye out for more content coming every other Friday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my YouTube channel. Check out some of the other great creators and uh, let's have a great 2021 as we emerge from this terrible pandemic and hopefully on to much, much better days. Thank you all once again. Have a wonderful day and weekend and we'll see you back soon with more mall adventures.
My flame's coming. <laughs> <laughs>